Hi everyone, welcome to THD and today we are going to talk about week 3 of the planetary qualifiers for Star Wars Unlimited. So this weekend we got 10 additional uh, planetary qualifiers uh, of diverse uh, different sizes and out of the 10 planetary qualifiers, 5 of them were won by a boba deck, either a boba green or a boba yellow. Uh, with that being said, the meta overall is a little bit more balanced than it was in the past few weeks. Um, a few uh, interesting uh, new decks uh, came up, and uh, which we will review in this video. And uh, we also had a higher proportion of hand deck, namely hand yellow. Uh, the whole hand yellow did much better. Han, young hand blue, which didn't do well in the first few uh, in the in the first two uh, uh, weeks of planetary qualifier. This week did. A lot better which i think is um deserved because i think han blue is one of the best deck i was ranking it as one of the, um, on the on my s tier of my of my meta ranking is in my opinion in my opinion one of the one of the best deck in the meta in my opinion um so nice to see uh it uh perform as well and uh other than this not really nothing new still uh by boba is by far the most successful deck in uh in the meta right now by in proportion which i in my opinions are unhealthy but we'll 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 get into that in a bit more details so first of all we got the uh, pq sevilla in spain as usual the all spanish friends have the highest attendance in tournaments so i was it seems to be very successful in in spain which is uh, very nice to see um one in 24 players and uh, a top eight which is fairly representative to the meta overall. We got two Han, uh, one yellow deck doing well, two Han, two blue. So the Hans, uh, even though Han, two blue and Han, one, uh, one yellow, completely, completely different decks. Uh, so that's nice to see. Then attacking yellow, um, managing to make it to a top eight, uh, which is uh, I'm happy to see because I always thought this deck was, was quite good. Uh, and then two Han yellows in top eight and the Sabini CL, uh, which is yeah so uh, definitely a more balanced uh, top eight that we've been used to uh, um, very anti-control Han yellow is particularly strong against control so not a not a good environment for control decks to involve into uh, uh, so that that was uh, pretty interesting so uh, moving on now to uh, so we can take a look at the oh yeah this is the overall meta as you can see uh, Boba Fett won only 20% of the meta, which is not that much compared to what we've been accustomed to in terms of attendance. But the fact, I think, what is particularly telling with, with Boba is that the people who play Boba is always kind of in the areas of 20%, but always in top 8. Not always, but often the, the percentage in the end uh, uh, on the top 8 is a lot higher than this, which means that the deck is consistently overperforming compared to its attendance. It's not... Uh, some people are saying, well, uh, Boba does very well because it sees a lot of play. But actually, in a lot of cases, Boba overperform compared to its attendance. In this case, it's it's exactly the same proportion here. We got 20% uh, Boba 1 in top 8 and 20% of Boba 1 in um, uh, uh, before that. But um, the Hantu is second most played deck, which is definitely not something we, we, we used to see that much. Uh, and then the dark uh, and Sabine is actually not super heavily represented. It's the third most represented deck here, Sabine uh, in red. So this is a, a result that is a little bit more. This result, the tournament result, is a bit more closer to what we've been accustomed to in uh, the earlier tournaments that we had in in Manchester in and in the in um, Leicester and um, and that kind of thing. Anyway, so take a look at the deck list here. So we got on. Um, uh, this um, yellow talking yellow talking deck, which is pretty standard, I would say. Yeah, it's pretty much what you would expect. Uh, the Vader here. Uh, see some more and more people. Personally, I prefer Maul as a as a card that you can get. Vader allows you to search to get the Lurking Tide Phantoms and Seven Speed Defender, which is as you, one of the most important cards in the deck. But I feel like. Mold does a better job at finish, uh, finishing off the game, which is smashing him out of overwhelm. Um, it's not playing the um, the uh, triple dark raid, uh, the triple dark raid um, 
uh, reinforcement walker combo, which I'm personally a big fan of. But yeah, other than this, uh, some interesting cut in sideboard here with the Gram of Tarkin in the sideboard here, uh, probably uh, to get some gas against control. And um, yeah, pretty cool deck. Also, nice to see also the Gladiator seeing some some play. This is the the cool thing about the the Tarkin deck is like it's one of those decks which uh, make certain cards which are considered to be not super playable and it makes them playable because in this context of course uh being um getting like a, having the uh, options to get a sentinel in space from triple dark rate can be very valuable if you're looking for that um yeah it's cool cool stuff um we then move on to the hantu balloon list so uh one of the thing about hantu is that it's a deck that i think can adapt itself to do pretty decently against against boa um, we'll see, for example, the full package of Concord Dawn Interceptor, which is, I think, a very good card against Boa. Um, so being able to be play all three of them in the deck, and you can play heavy-handed in the uh, later stage of the game without sacrificing your early game because you can play your three drop into two drops. Uh, so you basically play this deck basically plays no two drops outside of just the Sabine, and he plays the um, the the Carabaster. It's a pretty classic version overall. Not much to say about it. Um, moving on now to uh, our PQ in Cardiff, uh, which was won by my good old friend Dave. Um, now part of, he's now part of my testing group, an excellent Netrunner player. Uh, and he won this with Boba Yellow. And as you can see, the meta was pretty nasty in favor of Boba with two Boba Green, two Boba Yellows and one Boba Red in top eight. Sabine Green, Boba 2 Blue. So a Boba 2 Blue, they did top 8 in Cardiff, and Han 2 Blue. So the person who was playing Boba 2 Blue was actually playing my version of the deck. He just made a few changes. I think he, he, he removed some rivals for He actually talked to me. And he actually replaced some of his rival for by some, um, uh, by some uh, Confiscate. So his deck is pretty much the same as, as mine. So this is uh, I'm I'm glad to see this deck doing well in doing some results in tournament, even though it's only one result. I believe that Boba 2 Blue is relatively well positioned in the current meta. I think it's a deck that can beat Boba. Uh, I would say it has at least a 50-50% against Boba, and it does pretty well into aggro because it has loads of sentinels and a lot of a uh, lot of heal, a lot of sentinels, and some removals as well. So I think it's a, it's quite a good deck in my opinion. Uh, and this is why I show it on my, on my channel. So actually, the list is right there. So yeah, you can see here. Plays the the the, the, the traitorous as I as I do too. Yeah, the only difference here is he's no longer playing rivals falls in the main. He plays some confiscates uh, instead. That's pretty much the only difference. Even the sideboard is the same here, with the uh, the cop veins here for control, the tax for controls, additional removal, and more redemption for the uh, for the boba matchup and the uh, the shoe side. In the sideboard, so go over those different lists here. Uh, okay, Aaron Malls. Okay, that's very classic. Uh, Boba Green. This is the Boba Red. Oh, played by Buku. Okay, yeah, Buku is um famous uh, guy who plays a TT uh, TTI. And uh, I think he won uh, a tournament recently. Uh, it was a standalone tech tech initiative tournament, and he was playing here as you can see the all space uh, um. Boba Red. Matt Conway was playing a uh, Han 1 Blue. Um, it's a decent deck. Uh, obviously, double Han into look pretty strong. Uh, nice to see this deck doing well. Yeah, nothing too different here. Oh, he's playing out of aspect 4th throw, which is interesting. That's because he can play 4th throw on turn 2 with the Grogu on turn 1. That's interesting. Not sure if it's... 100% worth it. I, d I don't feel like 4th throw early on in the game is particularly strong because the opponent has this point has so many cards in hand. Relatively easy to get rid uh, of the right card. Then we got Bradley Johnson playing a version of uh, of um, of uh, Sabine. Pretty classic version. Only plays one Dark Sabers, which is what I've been recommending personally. But the rest of the deck is pretty much what you would expect. A couple of Spectral Soldiers, which is not always played nowadays, but yeah, pretty old school good version three shoe sides in the sideboard which is not a card i would ever consider in a sabine uh personally but interesting to see this thing play definitely could have taken some people by surprise uh thomas rose here playing boba yellow and this version uh plays the uh D dr evazan uh, which is a card that 
I still think is is decent. It it's really depends on the situation. This specific version of the deck plays two copies of a new adventures and three copies of McClunky, which makes it easier to prevent the Doctor of Ascent from being killed, and therefore does make the card slightly better. Uh, the rest of the deck though is fairly uh, accurate. The jetpack are basically just additional copies of the O44 blasters. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, so we already talked about the uh, Boba, the Damio blue deck. Then there's uh, Alec Drinkwater, who was playing, as you can see, uh, the Boba green uh, value deck. Um, yeah, pretty much what you would expect. But once again, Doctor of Azan making an impact here in those um, in those uh, in those tournaments, and at least he's going to be able to get a playset of uh, the new version of the the card. <laughs> So yeah, Doctor Vazan is is a card that um, is far from unplayable. And then finally, we got Dave Holland, uh, who uh, who's playing who's playing is is Boba Yellow deck, which is the, the same deck that he that he played in in Manchester. They did top eight in Manchester with, I mean the same kind of deck. And the deck, as you can see here, is very much what you would expect. Not much has changed until then. Um, okay, uh, then we got the tournament at Funtainment in PQ Berlin. And this tournament has been, uh, has had a lot of controversy surrounding it. So I'll try to explain it here a little bit. So basically what happened is um, uh, a player and uh, also a YouTuber called Lothar, which is actually a pretty massive YouTuber, he has like 20k subscribers, but he's mostly focusing on other, other games, even though he's been loving uh, Star Wars Unlimited. And he's mostly focusing on streaming and stuff like that. But anyway, this player um, basically, I think, got a buy in the first round of the tournament. And um, it seems that this buy has been counted as a loss by Melee for some reason. And uh, uh, he basically realized this uh, through the pairings right away, right from the first round of the game. And reported the issue to the organizers. And then the organizers keep basically every single round told him that everything was fine that is is is, is buy was a win and there but despite that he was still being pared down every round at least from his perspective so it was like it was very odd and then at the end of seven round he was basically at six wins uh, and one draw which is effectively a loss so at basically at six one and uh, which it should have been enough to make it to the top eight obviously uh and somehow he was not in top eight i think it was like top top 15 or something like that uh, which is obviously the ranking he would have had if, if he would have had if this um, buy was counted as a loss so until the end the, the buy has counted as a loss despite him repeatedly despite the organizer repeatedly telling him that indeed this this buy was a win and uh, so obviously he protested said that this is not accurate it should be in a top eight and the organizer told him that Mili set it up like this and there's nothing they can do about it. So basically, the organizers um, diverted the issue to the the program, and and uh, they diverted the the issue to the program. Blamed the melee basically for the issue that they were having, and never tried to fix uh, and and did not try to fix the situation at all. They lied to Lothar repeatedly because they told him that they fixed the issue, even though they obviously haven't. And in the end. Uh, Lothar did not make the, the top eight because of that issue, and Funtainman never tried to fix the problem, which is um, absolutely outrageous to say the least. Like it is obviously, if a program is wrong and is bugged, obviously, uh, as an organizer, you should uh, bypass the program to fix the situation by yourself. You're not a slave to technology. Uh, the technology is a tool, not an end. And therefore, you should try your best to try to fix the situation uh, manually if you cannot do it through the program. So obviously, since uh, Lothar was 6-0, I think uh, he should have been at the bottom of the person uh, of the people who had 6-1 because obviously his goal average was worse because he's been paired down the entire tournament. So this should have allowed him to be top 5 in this top 8, which is... Um, so yeah, nothing is right <laughs> on this. Like, it's just... Um, so un unbelievably incompetent from the organizers, the tournament organizers. I also overheard that there was many other issues in this tournament, 
so obviously because of that issue everybody got the wrong pairings uh, throughout the tournament which is not great and uh, also I've, I've heard that there were some multiple uh, judging issues like notably during the final uh, uh, um, uh, notably in the final uh, one of the 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 uh, a player basically killed a super lazy technician. Super lazy technician was placed in the discard, and the player never remembered that it was supposed to be placed as a resource. The the the, the judge intervened and told him that he should be placing his super lazy technician in the resource as a resource, uh, even though it is a a, a a mystery. It is not a mandatory trigger, and uh, and therefore he helped the, the 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 player. And that was during the final. So. Um, I'm assuming that many other issues might have happened during the tournament. Anyway, the organization, I would just want to mention it because it means that uh, in this top 8 here, there should be one more Boba Green deck because Lothar was playing Boba Green. So in terms of results, Bo Bo there should be a Boba Green deck in this in this, in this this uh, ranking. So we got a Hanwan Yellow, a Kira ECL, Boba Green, uh, one, two Boba Greens, and two, Ki two Kira ECL and a Palpatine Blue. And a boss clue. So um, in this top eight, two notable players that I personally know of. There is one Boba Green player who is uh, who is known as Sip. You probably know him, S I P Sip, uh, a guy who plays a lot of TTI, and in my opinion, one of the best, uh, one of the best player uh, in Poland. A lot of Polish people in this top eight in this tournament as well. And uh, Sobek, uh, who, who was playing a Bosque Blue, is indeed the winner of this tournament, and also a good friend of mine, as someone who would be part of my of my testing group as well. So let's get through the, about the different lists, but just notice that there should be a Boba ECL in this list instead of someone else. Well, I'm not going to say who that is, uh, but yeah. So here we got a uh, Han Wan Yellow, uh, pretty classic list here. Han Wan Yellow did pretty well uh, this weekend in the tournament. Then we got a Kira ECL finally making some results here. Uh, um, so pretty classic list as well for Kira. Versions plays ECL. Uh, I wonder if there were like many aggro in this tournament. I personally find Kira ECL to be significantly worse against aggro, but uh, in this, uh, yeah, but uh, looks like it turned out pretty good, especially since he's not, he's not playing that, many, that much healing. He's basically only playing the two Vigilances, which is not a lot of healing. So I can see this deck doing quite well against Boba, but maybe not so well against uh, aggro deck. The interesting thing is playing the Black Sun Starfighter, which is a good, really a good card against uh, against Boba as well. Uh, then we got um, a Boba Green, uh, classic Boba Green value deck. Then we got another Kira, which is pretty much the same deck as this one above here. So both are pretty, probably buddies. Uh, then we got a Palpatine Blue deck, um, a deck that is very weak to aggro. But in my opinion, if you are in a meta where you don't expect Pal uh, aggro to show up, I think Palpatine Blue is one of the strongest deck you can play. It's really, really powerful. Um, and then finally we got um, Sobek playing as Box Blue. So uh, Sobek is part of my testing group, and uh, um, he's been uh, we've been kind of going back and forth on different ideas about about uh, Bosk. Uh, so he tried to build a version that was really anti Boba, and a couple of ideas that he found in order to help against uh, Boba with this matchup is to had a couple of co copies of Clan Saxon's Gauntlet, which uh, really helps against uh, against Fire Spray. He also plays Redemption, which is another great card against Boba, even though it is an out of aspect Redemption. But in this case, uh, games are pretty long, so having to pay two extra resources for the Redemption is not the end of the world. The rest of the deck is pretty much what you would expect from uh, from a Bosk blue deck. Uh, one Bounty Hunter crew uh, in the main deck uh, for the mirror match, because it does really make the mirror match a lot better. Um, yeah, so uh, pretty interesting. He also plays the Covered Strengths in the sideboard. Um, I don't actually remember why he was playing this. I I think the initial idea was to place it on on um, on Tie Phantoms. So I don't know why he's playing it now that he's no longer playing Tie Phantoms in the sideboard. But anyway, so that's what he decided to play, and obviously congratulations to him for taking down the tournament. Uh, my uh, thought process about the Boba versus um, Bosk uh, matchup is that I think it's a very good matchup for Bosk pause board but after sideboard if the boba if the boss players have a lot of uh anti-control stuff 
it can become really bad after sideboard. So here, for example, if I look at this one, he does have three Papatons Baton, which are very strong, but he has only one copies of, of, of Relentless. So if he doesn't draw his copy of Relentless, and only that can be problematic. So usually I would advise Boba Green players to have after sideboard between two and three Relentless. So then the chances of drawing it are fairly, uh, are fairly uh, uh, like a lot higher. So then you can start doing some shenanigans with, with Papaton's Return. Because Papaton's Return is very, very good if you happens to have Relentless in the sideboard. If you never draw the, the one copy of Relentless you have, then those Papaton's Return are a lot worse. But yeah, if you have a good sideboard against Control, then the sideboard, the matchup is completely in favor of Boba Green after sideboard. So um, that's something to, to worth noticing. So... Uh, we got in uh, Toulouse in France another planetary qualifiers uh, with 80 players and the match and the, there were three Boba yellows, two Bosque blue, one Sabine ECL, one Cadvain Tarkintown, and one Han yellow uh, in this one. So once again, fairly balanced. Uh, Meta Sabine not doing so well. There's always like a Sabine lingering, uh, lingering somewhere. There's like one Sabine per top eight, but. Uh, Sabine has not done particularly well in this uh, specific meta compared to how much it re it's represented usually in the meta. So let's take a look at the different deck lists. So we got this one has the uh, full package of Peacekeeper and uh, uh, Dark Sabers in, this, in the main deck. Not a big fan of playing full package of Peacekeeper whenever you're playing Metal Ceremony because then the likelihood that you're going to have three Robos unit becomes a lot slower, a lot smaller. But yeah, other than this, it's a pretty classic version. Uh, then we got the Cat Bane, uh, red, which we've seen over and over again. This one is interesting because it has this kind of also a discard third theme, playing Pillage, No Bargains, and um, uh, Mayfield. So that's this, uh, some, some discard shenanigan going on. Maybe that helps a lot against... Uh, the thing that we've seen from Cat Bane is like it's uh, something that does very well against people who play units. Uh, the deck has suffer against control. Uh, no, sorry, uh, suffers against against Boba. I don't know how much that helps, uh, but that's an interesting package that he's decided to play here. Like the discard, the, the full discard package. Also some some sneak attack, uh, ruthless raiders action going on. So it's kind of cool. Um, then we got a Boba yellow. Um, classic version, fairly classic version. Then a Bosque blue which is, I think, yeah, very similar to the, the version I play. Uh, only one copies of Palpatine, I think is the only notable uh, difference. And uh, yeah, sideboard is pretty much what you would expect as well. And the number one, another Boba yellow deck. That is very classic. Okay. Uh, in this one, we got uh, PQ Albany in New York, in the New York region. Uh, 66 players, that's not a lot of players, so I think this is due to in the US they have this, apparently they, if you come from an, another region you can't take part in another, like that is, they have a, some sort of stupid rules like this which uh, prevents tournament from fully f filling up and that's a shame because I'm sure there's many other players that would want to take part in this tournament because yeah, 66 players for not a, is, not a, is not a huge uh, attendance here. Uh, so a Boba Blue, a Boba Red, two Sabine, a Han One Yellow, a Tarkin Blue, and a Han Yellow. A Tarkin Blue, that is interesting. Let's take a look. Okay, so this is pretty much just a mid-range Tarkin deck um, with Tarkin, okay. And then this Tarkin type Phantoms out of aspect with still very strong with Tarkin, obviously. Especially when you can get it from, from Vader interesting deck i mean it's not so different from the kira or slash chronic deck that you see um but um yeah it's not so different from that some from those kind of decks so obviously if you are basically playing almost the same card as those decks and you're just swapping the leader um your deck is not going to become a lot worse especially since stock is kind of decent leader but i'm not super convinced that the deck is particularly strong i mean he does have the type font yeah yeah um okay yeah it's a 66 players tournament so you gotta take the things with the grain of salt so we got the the boba red all space we got a han one yellow fairly classic version uh it's a bamboozle in the main deck and the, so the if you are wondering why you play liberating some people play liberated slave instead of 
other three drops is that Liberate Slave the 5 HP can make a pretty big difference in some matchup, especially against Boba. Doesn't die to 4 LOM, doesn't die to Boba, that does make a big difference. And sometimes it's more relevant than the ability itself. So on top of the DJ, you could play Liberated Slave. And it's not really a problem. Then we got some uh, Sabine ECL, classic version. The Bobo Blue. N nice to see this deck consistently doing well. And we have one copy of Calculate Lethality here. Uh, this version plays a lot of units, so I can see Calculate Lethality being quite good in some situation. Um, yeah. But still fairly situational, but it's only a one off, so I don't think it's um, that big of a deal. Rest of the deck is pretty classic, even though he plays a lot more unit than what you'd be used to. He still doesn't play Fire Spray, though, which i never been a big fan of Fire Spray in Boba Blue anyway. Uh, the interesting part is, the part is that he's not playing Boba's armor, which personally, I love Boba's armor in Boba Blue. But okay. Then we got Ron Mateo. This is another full space Boba Red. The Boba Red full space is really starting to establish itself as. A standard like it used to be kind of a not a meme deck but sort of like a deck that people didn't want it to play so much because it's so f so frustrating to play against it's not one of the least fun deck to play against in my opinion in the entire meta uh, but now obviously whenever you're playing for the PQ anything goes and uh, I still like Boba Red has definitely established itself to a standard in the in the meta game um, then we got uh, ECL uh, Sabine again and we got Han Blue with Alex Blandin playing as uh, sorry Han Yellow fairly classic version this one plays a bit of um, rebel things going on but yeah pretty much what you would expect otherwise so Han, Han Yellow has really uh, done well this weekend then we got um, PQ Greenville with a top 8, Bosk Blue, Palpatine Yellow, Luke Tarkin Town, Sabine ECL, Boba Red, Ray Red, Ray Red, Kira Green. So, Ray, dub, double Ray Red here, doing well here. Uh, and we only have two lists with Jordan Hanning playing his, with his Boba Yellow list. Um, interesting. Um, yeah, we haven't seen, uh, sorry, Palpatine Yellow, it's... Pretty much, it looks very, it looks very similar to uh, to Han to say to to Boba Boba Green, but with uh, much more heavy-handed leaders. Um, there's of course a more more reliance on the on the ramp. Three confiscates in the main deck. Okay, that is interesting. Only three, only two raiders though, and the three devastators. No. Uh, usually in, in Palpatine you see change of heart because you can steal a unit with a change of heart and then kill it with Palpatine's ability, which is quite powerful. And you also often see Palpatine deck playing like sneak attack to be able to do sneak attack, super Zuda, sneak attack, devastator, sneak attack, all this stuff. But this version has so many big ambush units, they may not need that. So kind of a tempo-y version of Papatine is uh, what I see here. And then the winner with Tarkin Town, fairly classic version of Ray Tarkin Town. Uh, with Tarkin Town has definitely re-emerged here. Um, a lot of people, including myself, considered Ray, uh, Red, Ray Tarkin Town to just be worse than, than Han Blue. Um, and uh, Ray is showing up uh, and doing some, uh, some results. So I've actually talked with um, a friend of mine who actually won uh, a PQ with, with Stark in Town last week and I had a conversation with him asking him why is Ray t what is the advantage of running Ray Stark in Town over Han Blue and he told me that uh, one of the major things that helps with Ray is the ability to um, um, so um, is the ability to 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 have very high health units, so to put plus one plus one counters on units, which does help in the early stage of the game against uh, McClunky. That is uh, one of the things that he told me. Uh, the fact that the deck has um, overall just a better a better late game, 
So whenever you reach that point where you manage to survive, which is not that difficult to do, you can heal with Ray um, and, uh, and, uh, and really come back into the game from that, from that point. Uh, and also the Tarkin Town does make it uh, easier to deal with certain things, not only all the ambush unit that just ambush you, then you can Tarkin Town get rid of them, that's a big deal. And also the fact, so also Ray Tarkin Town does pretty well against Hover Hand Deck because Tarkin Town is a pretty hard counter to the hand's ability, generally speaking. So that's basically what he told me that makes Ray a pretty good force uh, against uh, against those Boba deck. Even though he did he did confirm me that even though that's not still kind of a 50-50 ish matchup, but it's a pretty solid deck for the for those reasons. Next we got um, the PQ Seattle with one in player. We got two Boba Green, one Ray Tarkin down, one Gar Saxon Yellow. One hand two blue, one hand one yellow, Sabine ECL and Kira ECL. So a pretty relatively diverse meta, relatively representative to what you would expect to see uh, with a Gar Saxon yellow uh, in the mix here. There's always a, which is featured here. Um, so Gar Saxon is a, um, a leader that a lot of people, including me, try to make work very early on in the Star Wars Limited because on paper, the ability to give plus one attack to any unit that is, that is shielded seemed to be extremely powerful. Um, but in practice, it ended up not being so. Uh, the deck was just simply not fast enough compared to other aggro decks. And the shield, while very powerful against some decks, was not very powerful against others. For example, not very powerful against uh, certain blue control decks that simply don't care how many shields you have on your units. And not very strong against aggro, would would simply just ignore your units. Uh, therefore, you would just sacrifice tempo to play those shielded units, and it wouldn't matter. So this is kind of like has been my kind of my my feelings about Gar Saxon. Also, the fact that the dealer de the, the the leader deploys on six is a big detriment for an aggro deck. So it has been a little bit of a of a difficult uh, difficult to make work for me. But here, Gandork managed to. Uh, make a top eight with this uh, with this uh, list, and it is definitely, as you can see, an aggro deck where he's going to be playing early on those uh, early game units that are going to have um, uh, either a shield on them, or you're going to have those cheap upgrades like the uh, um, DF24 blasters or the snapshot reflexes in order to give them the plus one attack bonus and uh, attack in uh, right away afterwards. Um, and he can protect him. I'm guessing he's also taking some trades every once in a while to get ahead on the board. Also has a couple of removal, like those Power of the Dark Side. Uh, can play both in the air and in space. Obviously locking TIE Phantoms, uh, boosted with uh, Snapshot Reflexes, very powerful because uh, one of the main inconveniences of locking TIE Phantoms is it dies to make an opening, dies to stuff like a Snoke. Once it is a 3-3, it doesn't die to nearly as many things, becomes very difficult to deal with, especially when you get the snapshot reflexes on the two attack locking type phantoms at three attack with ray two that's five attack plus the gas and button that's six attack so that locking type phantom kills you very quickly very fast which is pretty cool so uh, and obviously the clients very solid three five units uh shielded is just very solid so there's a lot of um, good thing going on here uh so um congratulations for ganok to make gar saxon work i think he's the only gar saxon player that I've seen that has managed to make a top eight in a relatively big tournament. So, and obviously the change of heart here as a finisher, which is uh, really cool. So yeah, Gandark, if you don't know him, he's, um, he's kind of the rule nerd of the, uh, of the, of the discord. He's, uh, probably one of the most knowledgeable person in the, about the, the rules of the game that I, that I personally know of. And, um, nice to see him doing well, even though he didn't make it to the top four here. He got, uh, yeah, he didn't make it to the, the semi-final here, so he lost in top eight here. And uh, the winner was Undead Boba Green. Uh, next, um, we got the Planet of for the Salt Lake City. We got two Boba Green, one Boba Yellow, two Kira Green, one regular Kira Green, one Kira ECL. A Cad Bane ECL, interesting, Cad Bane ECL, not something you see every day. Personally, don't like Cat Bane ECL because I think it just results into a worse version of Boba. So I don't personally like it. 
and another ray tracking down and a Han 1 yellow again. So Han 1 yellows and definitely um, and the Kira green is the one who actually ended up winning, currently with 30 HP. PQ Baltimore got a Boba Green, Bosk Blue, Sabinicier, Boba Green, Tarkin Blue. Tarkin Blue again? What the hell? That's cool. Uh, Han 1 Yellow, Boba Tarkin Town, and Sabin ECL. And the winners, winner, Boba Green again. Uh, face to face, uh, at PQ Montreal, 119 players, quite a big one. And this top 8 is super scary. 1 Boba ECL. Two Boba Green, one Boba Red, and two Boba Yellows, with just a lonely Ray Tarkin, Tarkin Town in the mix. And the winner is a Boba ECL. And we got the PQ Bologna, which unfortunately got cancelled because of flooding. So, what is the conclusion uh, of this of this um, of this third week of PQ for the uh, Shadow of the Galaxy? Um, with the Shadow of the Galaxy um, metagame. The conclusion to me is pretty much we're continuing on the same trend of the meta being quite quite established. There's a few rogue decks popping out right and here and left, but we don't see a huge change in trends in the meta. For the most part, we are remaining on the same course of action where we have um, a meta that is relatively established and Boba is very much on top of that meta, but it's it's not on top to the sense that he's like a twenty percent of the meta, right? He's he's just way above this 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 level. Um, he's uh, as you can see here, uh, winning half of those uh, of those uh, PQs and also representing in a lot of those PQs a significant part of the meta. We also we almost always see at least two Bobas in each of those PQ. Uh, uh, top eight, and there's some PQs where we see six and sometimes even seven Bobas in the same top eight, and there's simply no leader that comes even close to that in terms of success. So granted, once again, there's a relatively diversity of different Boba decks that makes good results, but Boba Green seems to be very much on top, and that's obviously despite several weeks that people have had in order to adapt themselves to this new reality and try to fix that problem. So when a deck is capable of representing such a large portion of the meta despite being actively hated against, to me that's a that's not a good sign. So um, I still think uh, this meta is not uh, healthy in my opinion, and I still believe that they need something needs to be done. Uh, but as I said, we are heading towards set three. It's too late to do anything. We just need to see how set 3 is going to check things up. And if uh, set 3 doesn't do enough, I believe once again that Boba should probably be banned. I think my, my opinion has not changed on this, even though this meta is definitely a little bit more uh, diverse than the previous one. But that's to be expected as people are adjusting their deck in order to fight uh, this, this new fourth. And there's always kind of a balancing act that's happening in this, uh, on this uh, as a result. Um, so yeah, congratulations to everybody who made top eight and, uh, hopefully also, I also hope that, uh, there's going to be some improvement in the organization of some of the tournaments, mostly thinking about the, uh, the PQ Berlin that was particularly outrageous in terms of how it was an handled and, um, uh, hopefully, um, um, so yeah, um, and we've seen also a uh, shout out to all people who managed to do top eight with, uh, out of the meta decks and interesting and almost every top eight there's often there's been a uh, at least uh, one or two decks that are quite different from what we've been used to so that's kind of so it's always nice to see that thank you so much for following that video and i'll see you next time for another video um if you like that that kind of content please as usual like and subscribe to support the channel thank you so much i'll see you next time